Hello and welcome to Little Antique Me. My name is Elizabeth and today I'm back with another vintage hat tutorial. After my last vintage hat tutorial, it was requested many times for me to come back and make another. And so today I am here and I have a hat that I would like to share with you. Yeah, I figured since it's 2020 and there's the big hype about, you know, it's the 20s again, I thought I would show you how I made my cloche hat. I made this one, I think about five years ago, four years ago now, and it's still one of my favorites. I also made it in purple, which my children have taken off with and I'm not sure where it is, but here's a picture of my purple hat. I will leave the link to the pattern below. I just found it on, I think it was Craftables, and the lady that printed out or wrote the pattern just did a fantastic job and she even linked to a really pretty flower which you saw in my last hat tutorial. So if you want to make these I will link that video below as well and you can go and look those up. Uh, so for today we are going to do this hat. This one I made in felt which is what's recommended because you don't have to line it. It ends up being very nicely finished inside. Uh, so I would recommend going and finding a nice sturdy felt at your local craft store. I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby and it's just in the fabric department. Just go and ask for a thick felt and it comes in a bolt. And I used, I picked up a half a yard just because I wanted to make sure I had plenty. I think it to call, the pattern calls for a fourth of a yard. So just read the pattern and it'll tell you exactly how much you want. You could do it in any color you want. I just chose gray because it was simple. But for today, uh, it, I'm going to use some gray material I have left over from another project. It's a suiting material, so it's, it's a little floppier than my hat. And so I also picked up some thick interfacing. So I'll end up interfacing my pieces. You don't have to do this. If you end up getting the felt, skip the interfacing part. Don't even worry about it. But I want it to still have that structure and that hold. Without further ado, let's move on to cutting out the material. All right, to start, go ahead and go down to the description box on this video and uh, click the link and scroll down until you see the pattern PDF. You're going to go ahead and click on that and I'm using my iPad so saving it is a little different on here as opposed to maybe a computer. I would recommend using your computer and you're going to go ahead and follow their printing direction, making sure that it is printing to a full page so that you have the right size pattern. There's also a section on there to show you how to make the hat bigger or smaller. Make sure you definitely check those printer settings and don't make the same mistake I did because as you can see I didn't change my printer settings the first time. So go ahead and cut out these pattern pieces and we're just going to cut them all out. I end up cutting it so that I still leave that fabric fold thing on there just so I remember to cut this on the fold. <laughs> So you're going to go ahead and need your pattern, you're going to need some straight pins, some fabric scissors, your felt or wool material, and if you're using wool or any other type of material, you're going to want that heavy interfacing. So to get started, we are going to lay out the brim piece. I am currently out of tape, so the best way to do this would be to tape those pieces together and then pin them onto the fabric. If you are using felt, you're only going to want one piece of brim, but if you're like me, I'm going to go ahead and cut two pieces of the brim and we'll talk about that later. For these next four pieces, they are placed on the fold. So make sure that you um, have the right side of the material folded together so that you're pinning on the wrong side of the material. If you're using felt, this typically doesn't really matter because there's no right or wrong. And um, since I'm using my wool material, I had to make sure that I was on the right side. So go ahead and pin those all down. And if you are going to be using uh, interfacing like I will, you're gonna wanna go ahead and lay your pieces out on the interfacing just like you're laying them out on the material. And go ahead and cut those out and iron the interfacing on the wrong side of the material.
For my sanity's sake, I always put two pins on my back pieces just so that I know that those are the back pieces and I don't have to worry about getting confused because they are very similarly shaped to the front pieces. This just saves me from forgetting. Next, I went ahead and ironed on my inner facing and this is kind of what they look like. Uh, I ended up pressing this one again because it didn't stick very well. But you go ahead and just press those and you'll be able to use them. To start, we're going to pin the hat front and the hat crown front together. So I found the middles and pinned that first. And then since it's a curved hat, you're going to have to move the pins around a little bit to match them up. If you are using a, a felt type material, you will notice that it will lay in a little smoother. Mine's a little bit more bulky because of the wool and that it has the interfacing. So I just kind of move it around until it looks decent and that will help with um, when we actually sew it together. So once you have it all pinned together, we are gonna go ahead and move to our sewing machine. And for this uh, pattern, it calls for a half of an inch seam allowance. So we're going to use that seam allowance and stitch the first two pieces together. And again, it's a curved piece, so you're gonna, it's gonna be a little challenging, but just kind of keep with that curve and move around as you go. I went ahead and pinned the back pieces together just like the front pieces and repeat the same process, so using the half an inch seam allowance and uh, just working slowly around it so that you can work around that curve. And then once you have that all sewed together, we are going to turn it right side out and we're going to do what's called top stitching. So we're gonna push the seam allowance down, either to the right or the left, it doesn't really matter. And then you're gonna stitch really close to your seam so that it holds that seam allowance down underneath and it gives it a nice smooth finish on top. You're gonna repeat that on both hat pieces, the front and the back. Now that we have that together, we're gonna to stitch the front to the back. So we're gonna place them right sides together. So putting the front part inside the back part, matching the points, and then matching the other point. And then we're gonna sew across what will be end up being the crown of the hat. Uh, so that will be across the two crown pieces. So pinning those together, uh, much like the first time around, you're going to have to move the fabric a little because it is a curved. And again, like I said, the felt will be a little less bulky and will be a little more smoothly put together. Once you've pinned it, you're gonna stitch it just like you did the other pieces. So you're gonna stitch it and then top stitch it down, pushing that seam down to create that nice smooth finish. Once you have that all done, we're gonna turn it right side out and see how it looks. As you can see, mine does have some gatherings, but that I like that. Um, with the felt, it becomes a more smooth finish. For the brim, if you're only using the felt, you only need one piece of brim. You're not gonna have to worry about it fraying. But since I'm not and I'm worried about my fray, I'm just going to stitch it together and then flip it right side out and we're going to attach it to the hat. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a hem in the back of the hat. And I, what I do is I just basically just pin down a little bit of a hem. I just like this finished look. If you're using felt, you actually might not need to do this. But since I have it with the interfacing, I want to tuck that interfacing down so it doesn't stick out. And then I just uh, stitch really close to that line to create that little bitty hem in the back. Next, you're gonna decide, do you want the wide part of your brim to be on your right or your left? And then once you have that decided, we're going to put the brim inside the hat and pin it down, much like you can see on the screen because the way this is gonna work is we're actually gonna flip the brim right side out and it's going to fold over that uh, raw edge so that it will keep it nice and clean line. 
Once I have it pinned, I stitch super close to the edge of the brim as possible so that I can have the hat brim to be as wide as possible because I like that really thick brim. So go ahead and stitch it and we're going to flip it right side out. Now you can decide how you would like to finish this hat. Either you can leave it as is and we could tack it the hat brim down with a little tack stitch or you could put the flowers like my first one. I went ahead and put it on my mannequin just to see how I liked it and decided to leave it as is and then just use a brooch to create a nice little touch of finish and touch of class. I also like the idea of a brooch because I can swap it out and add different kinds of brooches. I don't have to keep with the same one and it can add just a little different color or different flair depending on what I'm wearing this with. Thank you so very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed yet another hat tutorial. I'm hoping to come up with a few more of my own so that I can share them with you. I have some ideas, but I need to run them through a couple of times before actually filming because you don't want to see me struggling, or maybe you do. <laughs> you don't want to watch all of that struggle. So we'll get to that eventually. But I really hope you enjoyed this hat tutorial. I hope you get to make one. I really appreciate the original instructions because they are very well laid out and easy to follow. And if you did make this hat, I would love to see it. If you want, you can tag me on Facebook or Instagram at Little Antique Me. Or you can email me your pictures at, uh, let's see, you can email me your pictures and my email address is littleantiqueme at gmail.com. I'll leave all that below for you. And I will be back hopefully next week with another video for you. So I hope you have a wonderful week, a wonderful day. May God bless you and keep you this week. And I will see you soon. Bye.